What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto 49er bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about Gecko Trading Bot and finding the real buy and sell price. So if you're like me, I create strategies that actually save the buy and sell price or actually not just save it but like list it out, you know, show it to me either on um, Pushbullet or Telegram or even just the console so I can see what the buy and sell price is when Gecko executes the buy or the sell uh, trade. So this is push bullet. You see, I have the information here that's outputted when um, the trade, actually the round trip completes in this case. So bought at 198.05 and a sold at 198.35. So, but this is unfortunately not the actual buy and sell price that the bot executed on. So if I go back to Coinbase Pro, where I actually made these trades on, the actual price that it executed the buy on was 198.06, as you can see here. And the sell price was actually was correct. But let's go back to one trade earlier. So in here, you see that it bought at 194.50 and sold at 195.53. But it didn't do that. It actually bought at 194.64 and sold at 195.45 which is completely different from the what is actually listed in here, what um, Gecko was supposed to execute on. So I'll explain why this is happening in one bit. But first of all, I just want to remind you guys that I am on Twitter and not just that I'm on Twitter, I, I'm now actively posting on Twitter. So what that means is that in addition to seeing these videos, like this pinned tweet here, uh, listing all the videos I put out, I also actually just really participate actively showing all these different charts i'm talking about uh, for example like this one here regarding litecoin will it actually break 50 i'm not sure i haven't checked the price today but here's another one i'm um, just telling you guys that like if you're using bots for example for you know those uh those sick um twitter bots that actually tells you the whenever a new coin gets listed for example and using that as a long signal that doesn't work out that well so I'm providing a wealth of information, so hopefully you guys uh, follow me on Twitter. In addition, I also got my own Twitter bot working in terms of using it, using Gecko to export out information. So I have right now the USD uh, BTC trade pair, um, and basically what Gecko does is it tracks when this trade pair exits the oversold territory, or when it enter, or when it exits the overbought territory. So in this case. I'm not giving you guys financial advice. Don't consider this as financial advice, but that's you know as proper indicator what the indicator would say. Basically, if you just follow the very basic, you know, dirty. If it's below dirty, it is oversold. If it's above seventy, it is overbought. And just by that, based on that general information that everyone knows, this is what the price is, and this is what happened. So it end up that um this particular trade is profitable. Again, not financial advice, but this is something that um. It's good to know just to like see how this pair is actually um, performing based on just the RSI indicator. So if you want to get all this information or you just want to say hi, you can definitely um, follow me on Twitter. So anyway, back to what I was talking about before, where these prices here, obviously are the accurate ones on the exchange itself, but the ones that you see or the ones that you get from Gecko by saving that information, let's say, you know, um, saving the actual buy and sell because these are the prices that actually execute. So these are prices that Gecko executes on, but it doesn't execute successfully. And the reason why is really simply this. There's something called slippage. So slippage essentially is when there's either no interest or not enough interest in the market at the price you're buying or selling at. And what happens is you end up having to buy at a slightly higher or slightly lower price. Or another another situation is if you have um if your order is so large, let's say that you're a whale, you're buying such a large amount that you end up um eating up not just from the top of the order book, but the second level and the third level, so on and so forth, and until you eat up a bunch of orders, but then all these orders are actually not exactly at the same price. So that you're not actually getting the bet the price that you wanted to buy at originally. You end up paying a little bit more or when you're if you're selling you're selling at a little bit less than what you want to sell for. So that's what basic slippage is. 
So for my trades here, they're really small amounts. So slippage isn't affecting my trades in terms of the volume size anyway. So, but what's really happening here is the lack of volume on the other side. That's the reason why Gecko executes the trade at that price. As we see here, 194.50, it bought at, it tried to buy at the price. You know, it says bought at, it really just tries to buy at 194.50, but it doesn't actually execute it because it, what happened is probably stays on the top of order like right around here and then the next minute comes the you know uh, the price goes up a little bit and then eventually you find uh, some seller that's willing to sell at that price because again this uh with gecko you is a sticky order so it actually sticks to the top of order book so it doesn't just stay down where it was at the actual price where it was trying to buy at 194.50 it actually will move your order to the top of the order book so it'll stick to the top of the order book until there are sellers that are willing to sell to you at that price. So again, in this case here, that, that what that means is that even though it tried to execute at 194.50, it didn't buy until 194.64. So what that means is that um, it's not as profitable, at least definitely not as profitable as um, what you originally hoped it would be based on the numbers that you were actually operating on like basically if this was a paper trader for example if you were just paper trading you would be executing at exactly this price 194.50 and selling at 195.53 and you'll be exactly making half a percent in terms of uh, profits so but that's not the case here because of the lack of sellers and buyers buying back into this price point so i previously made another video using market orders it's actually in this video right here why live trades Will perform worse than backtest and essentially in that video i explained that because we're using limit orders you're almost always guaranteed to not execute at the price that you want so in this video i show you how to change the settings and your exchange wrapper whatever exchange you're using you change the setting from a limit order to a market order and you'll execute at much closer to the price maybe exactly to the price that you want and then at that point it really just comes down to the actual slippage based on your orders size and whatnot but because if you do this though at least for me or for other exchanges as well like for me in coinbase pro for example you end up paying a market order fee it came down to like is this even really worth it like to pay them a market order fee of 0.3 percent so ultimately it wasn't that good of an idea for me just because my trades are pretty much a scalping trades so they are already very low profit percentage so if I'm paying a trade fee on top of that, I'm probably making nothing to almost losing uh, profits. So that's why I didn't really want to do that. But at the same time, I want to get like a more accurate information in terms of um, exactly how much I'm making. So instead of having Gecko tell me 194.50 and 195.53, which are not really accurate information, I want the exact number without actually having to go to the exchange to look for it all the time. And given that Gecko talks to the exchange all the time there's got to be a way to do this right and there it is it really is simple it's really just i have to say it's just one line of code i really wish gecko just has this information sent out but it doesn't i mean i might actually um put in a pull request to have this uh added into gecko but we'll see i mean ultimately it's really just one line of code so it's really not that big a change but what it is is if you go into visual studio code here so again, in here, this is what this my strategy that I'm using, and this again, this is a this is the information that gets outputted into Push Bullet in this case. But again, this information is not accurate. What you really want is to have Trader.js. That is the JavaScript file that actually talks to the exchange, and this is where Gecko would have that information in terms of how much it end up buying or how much it end up selling the crypto that you um, that you're trading at. And it's really just this one line of code right over here inside this um, this dot order dot on function on completed basically. So this function only runs when it gets a completed message from the exchange. So inside this function right here, I added this one line log dot remote. Again, log dot remote is not something that you have um, available by default in Gecko. So, but if you guys want to know how to set that up, so that you can get remote, so you can get messages alerts sent out to you via telegram via uh, push bullet or even twitter 
So you need to watch this previous video that I made regarding how to remotely control your Gecko via Telegram. And this video, I believe this one and there might be another one about push bullet that will show you exactly how to implement this log.remote um, function. But again, it's really just like the same thing as like if I typed in instead of log.remote, if you guys don't have that, you can just type in log.info. And essentially what log.info does is it puts out this information into the console so that you can at least see the exact buy and sell prices in the console without having to log into your exchange and take a look at it. If you guys already built out something like where it actually exports out into a spreadsheet, something that I, have, I haven't done yet, but um, definitely something that's not very hard to do, you can um, store all your buy and sell orders on a spreadsheet and be able to see it, um, how profitable your strategy has been. So, but anyway, within the log.remote function here, all I did was just put out the information about the side. The side is basically whether it's a buy or sell. And then I added like a new line character so that formats a little bit better. And then it tells me the summary that price. This is the actual exact price that it actually bought or sell at. So this is the actual price. This is the correct price. This is the exact same price that you'll see on exchange. And then summary that amount. This was the actual amount that was bought or sold. This is the crypto amount. This might not be that important depending on your situation. I mean, I know there are times when Gecko doesn't trade the whole entire amount, the whole entire balance, and people are frustrated about that. So this is at least a quick way to see how much crypto has bought. And you can tell just by looking at it sometimes, like if this something like Ethereum where it's just hanging around $200 lately, it is something that is uh, very easy to see if Gecko used the entire balance. And then summary.date.format is really just uh, a way to see the exact date and time that the trade has occurred. So once I put in this information on, you know, put in this one line of code, so this is what it looks like now. And go back in here. I go to push bullet, and you'll see that I have, uh, in addition to a whole bunch of other stuff like bot is still working, I have a lot of different things in here. Again, I put a lot of modifications in the gecko, but the most important thing that you guys should care about is something like this right here sell 198.35, the amount and the date. So that one line of code puts out these four pieces of information for when I actually make the sell trade. So from here, I can tell that because I still have the information from my uh, strategy telling me that the sell price that it tried to execute on. So in this case, I can tell that the sell price that it tried to execute on, it executed successfully. And then I'll probably scroll back up because actually I got the buy price a little earlier. So the buy price I got was 198.06. And then I also looked at it and oh, okay. So it tried to execute it at a slightly at a slightly lower price at 198.05, but it failed to do that and executing it at a slightly higher price. Not a big deal, but ultimately I can get the exact, the true, the real price that Gecko is processing my trades in. So that's basically all, all that one line information is able to tell me that. So ultimately, you guys can actually do a little bit more um, modification to this, for example, and maybe have the log.info, have that have this information uh, sent out to another location, maybe in the config file like I do, and then save that information and actually um, send it out when the trade is complete so that you would get this uh, information that's accurate, not actually the not actually the price that Gecko tried to execute at, but the actual the real price, so that you would know that this is the real price that it executed at instead of the the tr the price it tried to execute at. But that's basically it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. Peace out.